Good morning, Fountain family and friends. Thank you for joining us for worship today. Guess what day it is? It's Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> happy Mother's Day, everyone. Yes, I'd like to wish all the moms out there watching a happy and blessed Mother's Day. We have something really special planned today because today is a really different Mother's Day than we've ever experienced. Yeah, definitely. Normally people are having large family gatherings or they go out to some restaurant, but all of that's not possible today. So. We thought of doing something really special here that, that we've talked about and we want to do. So tell everybody what it is. Uh, well, we're going to do a drive-by rose giveaway to honor all moms. Um, it'll be here at the Burlington campus. My husband and I will be here. Um, you just pull into the parking lot. There'll be somebody to direct you where to go. Drive up, roll down your window. We'll have our mask and gloves on. Masks and gloves. And we'd like to hand you a rose and a blessing. It's our way of of making Mother's Day special for you. And so we hope that you'll do that this afternoon, today, between the hours of 1, 1 and 3. And 3 p.m. So 1 and 3, just drive onto the campus and uh, you'll be directed to where we are. And we really want to see you too. We do. We yeah. really do. Yeah, we, we miss you. We love you. We're praying for you. And so today's a really a special Mother's Day. And so we look forward to seeing you this afternoon. Yes. But right now, let's get ready to worship as the team is prepared to lead us. And we hope you'll join in and worship with us. God bless you.
You brought me back 
Hey everybody, we're gonna be reading a scripture together. We're gonna be starting in Psalm 42. So if you wanna grab a physical Bible, maybe you have it on a device on your phone, but if not, it's always on the lower thirds of your screen. So starting in Psalm chapter 42, it says this. It says, as a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Jumping down to verse eight, it says, by day, the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. Jumping over to verse 11, it says this, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall praise him again. I am satisfied in him, my salvation and my God. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you so much that you are a big and powerful God. We thank you that even when our soul is downcast, we can find strength and we can be sustained in you, Lord. In this season, God, would you satisfy us? Would you allow us to be able to remind ourselves of how big you are and how great you are, Lord? We love you. We thank you. We pray all these things in your powerful and holy name. Amen. Well, hello, friends. Thank you for joining us here at the Fountain of Life on another online Sunday. That's right. That's and today's right. a special day. Tell me what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mother's Day. That's right. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. As you heard Luann and I mention a few minutes ago, today's going to be a, an exciting day. It's a yeah. drive-by Rose giveaway. Nice. I, I like hear it. you're going to be holding up a sign to show people where to go. Yeah. I think I'm going to get the one that says, I got it for my mama. So, okay. Let me go one. <laughs> It's a great day here at the Fountain of Life, and we're just so glad that you're with us. Some exciting things are happening here at the Fountain of Life and some ways all of you can get connected. And so why don't you tell them, Pastor Ruben? Yeah, absolutely. If you are watching for the very first time, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. What we want to ask you to do is right now, if you can go to our website, flcnj.org, 
what you can do, there's a tab right there that says I'm new. We would love to be able to connect with you just a little bit more. So if you fill that card out, one of our pastors will be able to reach out to you and just say hi. Thanks so much for joining in um, with us. If you are looking for ways to connect with us outside of that, what we'd love for you to do is to connect with us on all of our social media that we got going on. Exactly. So we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and we're even on YouTube. So we'd love for you to, to, to stop by, give us a like, subscribe, do all those things. In addition to that, we do have an app that we want you to download as well. So if you're on Google, if you're on Apple, um, even if you have a Roku TV, you can even download a, a Roku TV okay. right there. You can even download our app. Uh, we'd love to get connected with you that way. So it's just an incredible way for us to get connected. If there's ever been a time where really the church needs to connect, it's right now. That's right. We have some incredible ways for our teens and our kids to stay connected as well. So yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. So we have a couple services that are going on for the whole family, right? So um, we're going to be talking about life groups in just a moment, but we also have for our teenagers, for our students, um, the source has videos that they throw out there on YouTube on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. So feel free to, to go to YouTube, look up the Source family. Uh, the link is actually in the video description as well. You can click right there and subscribe so you can see Pastor Matt and the team. In addition to that, our Life Kids is also, have, they have a yeah. YouTube channel yeah. as well. Um, so we have things for our Life Kids juniors as well as our elementary school. So the same thing, the link is going to be in the description. We'd love for you to click and subscribe to those. That happens on a Saturday. And so it's kind of like an on-demand thing. So kids um, are available anytime, anytime, anytime after Saturday. So if you're watching right now, you'll be able to, to, to catch that video. Maybe you want to watch during the week. You can do that as well. Um, so we got stuff going on for our whole family here. Our youth and our children's ministers are doing an incredible job. Absolutely. And the Absolutely. videos are, are par excellence. Yeah. Uh, so back to the adults, uh, life groups start this yes. week. We are so amped. Yeah. And the miracle of miracles, we had asked for 100 life groups. And right now we have 100 life groups ready That's to right. go. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank <laughs> you for so many of you that responded. And now they're all going to be virtual. Yes. But everybody needs to sign up for one so the leader can send you a Zoom invitation. Exactly. So the way it's going to work is if you will go on our website again, flcnj.org, there's a little tab there for groups. You'll see all of our community groups as well as all of our life groups. And uh, just so you know, we have a couple different things that we got we got going on. So um, we have the IM series that we're going to be jumping through. A lot of our life groups are going to be talking about that IM series. Exactly. Um, but we even have other groups that are going through material by um, Max Licato and Lisa Turk and um, Jensen Franklin. And, yes. and so maybe this different might be subjects. different subjects. This might be a great time for you to kind of jump around a little bit and be able to experience some different Good idea. material. So you're more than welcome to sign up for more than one life group. That's cool. But if you'll do us this favor, just go through that whole catalog, see what best fits you and the schedule that you have. And then you can sign up right there. Um, when you uh, sign up, we'll be able to uh, send your email address over to our facilitators and exactly. then they'll respond to you with that link and that meeting ID and password and all that stuff uh, for Zoom so that you can actually jump into that Zoom meeting. A great way for everybody to stay connected yeah. and to touch base with one another, encourage one another, pray for one another uh, during this COVID-19 crisis. Exactly. We have never, exactly. ever, ever even come close to having 100 groups. Thanks for the great job you're doing with that, yeah. bro. No, thank you for everybody jumping in. Appreciate exactly, it. exactly. So now we're going to get ready to worship with our giving. Yeah. I was thinking uh, this morning... Um, the God is a God of firsts. He talks about first fruits, yeah. bringing him the first fruits of all of our financial increase. Mm. Amazing blessings happen. I can't, I, I can't put my finger on it, but something supernatural happens when we put God first it's good. It's good. in our finances. He talks about the first day of the week, and that Sunday they gathered on the first day of the week. Yeah. This is the first Sunday of the month. Yeah. Oh no, it's the second. The second. Sunday. Okay, well that's okay. It still works. Still stands. <laughs> <laughs> but um, God is a God of firsts and whatever increase comes into our possession, he just asks us to honor him yes. with the first fruits. Absolutely. Whenever we do that, God said he would open the windows of heaven. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. How many people want to live under an open heaven? That's right. I do. You do. I do. <laughs> I'm going to live under an open heaven. God says when we bring him the first fruits, the tithe, um, when we bring him what belongs to him, we honor him. Yeah. 
and the heavens open, and he says, I will provide for you. In fact, I'll pour you out more blessing than you can deal with. That's good. God is a good God. And so I'm going to ask Pastor Ruben to just give you a couple of ways you can give your tithes and Kingdom Builders offering. Kingdom Builders still is continuing. Still happening. We are ministering on a level locally that we never have before. Absolutely. Our missionaries still need their support. So your tithe and Kingdom Builders offering, what are some ways they can give? Yeah, absolutely. You can always give by sending in your tithe uh, directly to the church, you know, physical address, um, 2035 Columbus Road in Burlington, New Jersey. That's available on the, your screen. You can give via the app that we were talking about a little earlier. You can text to give, and then you can always go to our website, flcnj.org, and you can be able to give right there. We really appreciate your faithful giving. Yeah, absolutely. And whether it's online or you're saying it in, in the mail, it doesn't, doesn't matter. But we just want to say thank you to you for your faithfulness because the work of the church, yeah. the building might be closed, yeah. but the work of the church is stronger than ever before. Absolutely. Would you just ask God to bless absolutely. the people thank you as so you much, take yeah. this time and give to the work of God? Yeah. Father, we are so incredibly grateful that we have the opportunity to be with you, God, and to worship you in this way, Lord. God, as we give you our first fruits, as we give you our tithe right now, Lord, we just pray that you would bless it and multiply yes, it, God, to be able to reach as many people as it possibly can, Lord, so more and more people can know the amazing name of Jesus, yes, Lord. the salvation that comes through you, God. God, would you bless your people as they give in your precious and holy name, Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. Welcome again, Fountain family and friends of the Fountain. I know I can say that because so many are watching us from all over the country and even around the world. I know that God has a word for all of us today that will bless you and encourage you on the journey. We're beginning a brand new sermon series today. I'm so excited about it. It's called, I Am Jesus in His Own Words. And over the next several weeks, we're going to look at the seven I am statements of Jesus found in the book of John. And every single one of the I am statements, Jesus shows us who he is and what he desires to do in our lives. But before we go to the book of John, I want to take you back to Exodus to where Moses encounters God at the burning bush. And you might be saying, what in the world has that got to do with the I am statements of Jesus? Oh, oh it has a lot to do with it. Some of you, I'm sure many of you remember the story, but Moses is on the backside of the wilderness. He'd been there for 40 years and God shows up just when he thinks his ministry is finished and uh, he has no future. God shows up. I love that about God. He always meets us in our desert places. Moses is in the desert. Uh, he did not. God did not meet Moses in the palace. He met him in the desert. And sometimes our greatest encounters with God will happen in our desert experience. Anyway, God shows up in a burning bush and Moses says, I've got to see what's going on here. God speaks to Moses out of the burning bush. He has a mandate for him, a commission, and that is to be the deliverer, to go to Egypt and to deliver the children of Israel out of the slavery they'd been in for 400 years. Now, I want to take you there in chapter 3 of Exodus, verse 13. Then Moses said to God, if I come to the people of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, say to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Now, in the ancient Greek, the words I am um, are ego emi. That may not mean a lot to you, but, but here's what it means. When God said, I am, what he was saying is, I exist to be. Think about it. I exist to be. And here's what's amazing about the Exodus experience and Jesus. Every time Jesus said, I am the bread of life, I am the light of the world, I am the good shepherd, I am the way, he used the same 
words, ego emi, the same words that God spoke to Moses when he said, I am. So you might think when Jesus says, I am the bread of life or I am the light of the world, he's just introducing himself. Oh, but it was much bigger than that. When Jesus said, and the first one today is, I am the bread of life, what he was saying is, I am the self-existing God. And I came to be whatever you need me to be, not want me to be, but I came to be, I am the self-existent God, and I came to be what you need me to be in your life. And when the Jewish people heard him say, I am, it wasn't just the bread of life or the light of the world that made them stand back. It's that he used the words, I am, that he used with Moses. Tell them, I am, that I am. Jesus was saying, every time he said the I am statements, he's saying, I am God. And I came to do for you what only God can do for you. Oh, Jesus blew their minds when he said these seven I am statements. Again, he was saying, I came to do for you what only God can do for you. Some of you may be in a situation right now, a desert experience, that you're wondering how you're ever going to get through it. And, and I came here today and visited your living room today to tell you that God can and will do for you what no one else could ever do for you. You got to say amen out loud to that. And there are three major truths I want you to remember today. I'm going to make them brief. When Jesus came and said, I'm the bread of life, here's what I want you to remember. The bread of life satisfies your spiritual hunger. The bread of life sustains you in the desert and the bread of life will strengthen you for the journey. Now, before Jesus said, I am the bread of life, I am the bread of life. Here was the setting. He had just fed the 5,000. You remember the story? Two fish, five loaves of bread, lots of fish sandwiches. But it was a miracle, and he fed the 5,000 men, plus women and children. Now, the crowd wanted to make him king. So he sends his disciples. He tells them, get in a boat and cross the Sea of Galilee. That's when he showed up in the middle of the night walking on the water. Well, they all reached the other side, and the Bible says the very next day, that same crowd, that 5,000 that got the free lunch, they showed up again. Here's what Jesus said to them when, when they showed up. In John 6, uh, verse 26, he says, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw the signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. So Jesus looked right at him, at them, with those glaring Galilean eyes. He said, you did not come back for a miracle or for my teaching. You came here because you wanted some more free food. That's exactly what he said. Could I, could I encourage you today, just like Jesus told them, stop chasing what's temporary. The food that he gave them, <laughs> they were hungry again. But he said, the food I give you, you will never hunger again. Stop chasing what's temporary and seek God who is eternal. What was their response? <laughs> Here's what they said. Our fathers ate manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. John 6, verse 32. Jesus then said, truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, sir, give us this bread always. And that's when Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And whoever comes to me shall not hunger. Whoever believes in me shall never thirst. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Guess what happened? When Jesus got done with this teaching, the Bible says all of them, thousands of them walked away because they said this teaching was too hard. 
He looked at the disciples and said, are you going to go too? They said, Lord, to whom should we go? You have the words of eternal life. You know what the problem is here? They wanted what Jesus could give them, what Jesus could do for them, how he made them feel, but they didn't want him for who he was. A lot of people are willing to follow Jesus as long as he's given away free stuff. But the minute he challenges us to go deeper, often many check out. Let's be careful that we don't only look for the provision of Jesus and miss the person of Jesus. And when Jesus said, I am the bread of life, he was piggybacking right off of what they were saying. Our fathers gave us bread in the wilderness. They gave us manna. And that's when Jesus said, <laughs> that was temporary. I am the bread of life. Let me take you there. Because Jesus was teaching them right now what the manna did for them. And many of you have heard about the manna, the bread that they ate in the wilderness. Jesus was about to teach them what the manna did for the children of Israel then. He, as the bread of life, would do for us today. So they leave Egypt. They cross the Red Sea. The Bible says they were about a month and a half into the journey, 45 days. They ran out of food. And they began to complain to Moses, man, I wish we were back in Egypt. At least we had meat and bread. They were complaining. And here's what God told Moses. The Lord said to Moses in Exodus 16, 4, I am about to rain. <laughs> I love this. I'm about to rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day. Now, I'm not going to read it all to you, but the Bible says it was a flaky-like thing, this manna, fine as frost. They would gather it together and bake it into bread. Hmm. And in chapter 16 of Exodus 31, the house of Israel called its name manna. It was like a coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made into honey. God gave it to them every day. For 40 years, God gave them bread every morning. They woke up and there was bread on the ground. Oh, and on the, the sixth day, he gave them twice as much so they wouldn't have to gather it on the Sabbath. <laughs> and they had to trust God to do that every day, too, because the Bible says if they gathered too much because they didn't trust it would come tomorrow, it bred worms and it stank. <laughs> wow. Bread every day. Right out in the desert. Hey, I, I, I've been in this desert. My wife and I led a team a few years, just two years ago to go to Israel. I was in that desert. There was nothing there to eat. The scorching sun, rocks, dirt. If God didn't take care of them, it wasn't going to happen. But every day, every day, there was manna. What Jesus did for them, he satisfied their physical hunger back then, but now he would satisfy their spiritual hunger, him being the bread of life. <laughs> wow, they never had, they, they, never, they never got up and said, what's for supper? Man, they had manna. And today being Mother's Day, I guarantee you there's some moms watching right now that could have put together a recipe book titled 100 Ways to Cook Manna. I've written some down. Baked manna, fried manna, sautéed manna. <laughs> grilled manna, manna salad, manna sandwich, manna kebabs, barbecued manna, broiled manna, raw manna, cooked manna. I wonder if manna is keto friendly. <laughs> they had manna every day. But what does this teach us? God gave them something to satisfy their physical hunger every day. I'll tell you what it teaches us. That Jesus, the bread of life, now satisfies our spiritual hunger Every person on this planet, everybody watching me right now, no matter where you are on the planet, everyone is created with a, with a desire, a hunger for God. And there's nothing in this world, this desert of a world we're living in, that can satisfy that hunger. Only Jesus, the bread of life, can satisfy the spiritual hunger that's in your soul. And you know, everything the world offers cannot satisfy that hunger. It's like artificial fruit. You ever go to someone's house, or maybe you have some, or at least back in the day, I don't know if people have it much anymore, there's artificial fruit. It looks so real, <laughs> you, you could almost grab an apple because it looks real and it's shiny and it, it looks like there's substance to it, but when you grab an artificial apple, it's plastic and it's hollow. It looks like it can satisfy you, but it will leave you disappointed every time. That's exactly what the world does. 
They overpromise and underdeliver. The world says we, 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 can, we can satisfy your spiritual hunger. Just smoke this, drink that. Have sex with this one. Get some more money. It'll satisfy you. And everything the world offers is fleeting and it's artificial. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I and I alone exist to be what will satisfy your spiritual hunger. <laughs> Jesus, and only Jesus, the bread of life, can satisfy the spiritual hunger that's in all of our souls. Number two, I want you to remember this. Jesus, the bread of life, sustains you in the desert. And I think, I don't think, I know every one of us who are watching today, know that this world can feel like a scorching desert. Jesus sustained them. And look at Exodus 16, 35. The people of Israel ate that manna for 40 years. God put bread on their table for 40 years. The bread of life sustained them in the desert. I told you, I've been to this desert. You get out of that air-conditioned bus, for 30 minutes and you want to get back in. That sun will scorch you. <laughs> but you know God took care of them because that cloud by day and the fire by night, the cloud by day was like an umbrella. It protected them from the scorching sun. The fire at night when it got cold in the desert kept them warm. Don't tell me what God can't do. He knows how to take care of his people. The manna satisfied their physical hunger. Jesus satisfies our spiritual hunger. And he sustains you in the desert. Why? He sustained them because they were his people. He sustained them because he loved them. And when you belong to Christ, he will sustain you. Not because you're good, not because you're faithful, not because you and I are, are holy Joes. He sustains us in this desert because we belong to him and because he loves us. And that manna was there every day. And I was out on a run this morning and sometimes... <laughs> Sometimes God gives me my best stuff when I'm running, and it hit me like a ton of bricks. The Israelites, they weren't always faithful. They rebelled again and again and again. You read the Psalms, it says, and they rebelled and they rebelled and they rebelled. And, and, and I thought, wow, what grace God has. Even when they rebelled against God, there was bread the next morning. When they didn't know what was coming next, there was bread in the morning. Every morning. When they worshiped God, there was bread in the morning. When they did not worship God, there was bread in the morning. When they rebelled against God, there was bread in the morning. When they were faithful, there was bread in the morning. When they were unfaithful to God, there was still bread in the morning. I'm not giving you some excuse to just live life off the rails. No, what I am telling you is that God knows how to sustain you in the desert season of your life. And it's never going to be because you're good or you're holy or always faithful. It's going to be because God is good. God is faithful. And he keeps his promise. He had told Moses, I'm going to take my people from Egypt and I'm going to take them to the promised land. That journey took 40 years, but God got them from point A to point B. And he sustained them all the way. Let me just insert this. God never chose to starve them out. God never chose to starve them out when their lives didn't measure up. Let that sink in. Let that marinate in your soul. He could have said, oh, you're not worshiping me. No more bread for you, knuckleheads. Oh, <laughs> you're complaining against Moses. You're, you're shaking your fist at me. No more bread for you. <laughs> Oh, you, you, you want to make alliances with ungodly nations? No more bread for you. No, no, no. God never chose to starve them out because their lives didn't measure up. And I love that about Jesus because your life doesn't measure up and neither does mine. But every day he sustains me with his grace. Can you say amen to that? Cameraman, can you say amen to that? <laughs> My wife is here on Mother's Day. Can you say amen to that? And God was their only source in the desert. They had no one else to sustain them. Could I just say this, friends, and I, I want you to hear this. Your employer is not your source. Thank God for our employers and the paychecks, but your employer is not your source. The stock market is not your source. 
New job opportunities or career opportunities are not your source. The economy is not your source. God is your source. And when there is nothing to sustain you, the bread of life will sustain you in your desert experience. I told you at the beginning, God met Moses in the desert, not the palace. Some of our greatest encounters with God will come in our desert experience and God will show himself strong on your behalf. Every single day there was bread for them to eat. And I promise you this, God will sustain you in your desert experience. This crazy COVID-19 thing, businesses are closed down and people have been furloughed and laid off and, and fired, let go. And you're wondering, how am I going to make it? And I just, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how, when, or where, but I know the Bible says, uh, the writer says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. When Jesus said, I am the bread of life, he contrasted it to the manna, or likened it as well. It satisfied their physical hunger. Jesus satisfies our spiritual hunger. That manna sustained them in the desert. And Jesus, the bread of life, will sustain you in your desert. And when you're tempted to hoard it up <laughs> because of panic and fear, remember what Jesus said. Pray this way. Give us this day our daily bread. He gave them that bread every day. And the moment they didn't trust him and thought, well, there may not be any tomorrow. Let's save it up. It bred worms and it stank, the Bible says. God knows how to take care of his people. Jesus looked at those Hebrew people that day and said, I am the same words God spoke to Moses. I am the self-existing God and I came to be what you need me to be. And every one of us need Jesus to be our bread of life. Let me close it out with this one. One more truth to remember. The bread of life strengthens you for the journey. Once again, it, Exodus 16, 35, the people of Israel ate the manna 40 years till they came to a habitable land. They ate the manna till they came to the border of the land of Canaan. I want you to know that Jesus does more than sustain you. He strengthens you for the journey. Theirs was 40 years. I don't know how long yours is or mine is, but I know this. He will strengthen us until he brings us to our destination. Hmm. Have you ever wondered when you went to bed how you were going to make it one more day? Where the strength was going to come from? I have. But you got up the next morning, you got dressed, you went to work, and you felt the surge of strength. Maybe when you worshipped or maybe when you opened the bread. And I want to tell you, that wasn't your spiritual fortitude or your holiness. That was, that was Jesus strengthening you when you felt like you couldn't get out of bed one more day. Have you ever wondered how you were going to keep from losing your mind when a loved one died? And now here you are. I've been there. We've been there. We've shared a story with you many times when our granddaughter died the day before her eighth birthday. You wonder how you can go on. You wonder how you can go on. And if you've ever thought you'd lose your mind because of something you lost, here you are today. Here we are today, many years later, going forward, living life, walking by faith. It was Jesus who sustained us. My wife is right here. She could, she could come right up here and tell you. It wasn't my ordination papers or my ministerial ability, my holiness or my faithfulness. I'm sure I shook my fist at God enough times. Jesus strengthened me for the journey. He, the bread of life, strengthened Israel for the journey, strengthened me, will strengthen you for your journey. Have you ever wondered what was next after the doctor Gave you a bad report, maybe COVID-19, maybe cancer, but you found strength in the person of Jesus and in the promises of God. Second Peter 1, 3 says, His divine power has granted us all things that pertain to life and godliness. It's His power 
not mine, not my human power, not my physical strength. His divine power has given us all things that pertain to this life and godliness. I'm going to close with this. Everything about the I am changes who I am. Everything about the I am, the great I am, changes who I am. The bread of life, Jesus, he said, I am God. I exist to be what you need me to be. And as we get ready to go to a worship song, it's going to be a song of blessing for the moms and for everybody out there. I just pray this song. You can sense the blessing of the Lord all over your life. But I want you to know, friends, everything about the I am changes who I am and changes who you are. The bread of life satisfies your spiritual hunger. The bread of life will sustain you in the desert and the bread of life will strengthen you for the journey. Every morning, the children of Israel woke up, went outside, and they had a choice. Pick up the manna and live or pass it by and die of starvation. It's the same thing with Jesus. Everyone watching me, if you have never committed your life to Christ, you have a choice. Receive him and live or pass by him and suffer loss. As the team sings, if you've never accepted Jesus, you can bow your head there on your couch and say, Jesus, be merciful to me, a sinner. And the bread of life will come in and give you life. As the worship team sings, I pray this song blesses your life.
Honey, that is one powerful song, the blessing. And uh, on this Mother's Day, Luann and I are here just to proclaim the blessing of the Lord one more time over your life. Let's all, over the next several weeks, continue to lean in to this Jesus, who is the great I Am. Let's bow our heads right where we are, there in your home, us here. In this house of worship, we want to pray the blessing of the Lord upon your life on this Mother's Day. Father, thank you that you satisfy our longing soul. Thank you, Jesus, that you sustain us even in the desert season of our life and you strengthen us with your presence for the journey. I pray this word today will bring great encouragement, Father, to everyone who hears this word and has attended this service. I pray the blessing of the Lord upon every mom, upon every family, upon every house, that the grace of God, the peace of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit will be with you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Once again, happy Mother's Day. And we'll see you next time.